leader, Ian Duncan Smith, has launched a strong attack on the Liberal Democrats. Speaking at his party's Scottish conference, he said the Lib Dems, who won the Brent East by-election, are a party of deceit and double standards, and a left-wing party who pretend to be moderate when it suits them. Ian Duncan Smith with political friends, a relief no doubt after the party's disappointing result in Brent East. But far from licking his wounds, the Tory leader attacked the Liberal Democrats, accusing them of posing as a moderate party while really being of the left. This, he said, was a strategic blunder because it would eventually lose them votes. As our vote held up, we saw a move from the left to the left. The Liberal Democrats, they talk a lot about honesty in politics. But they are a left-wing party who pretend to be moderate when it suits them. The Liberal Democrat leader was unruffled. With a spectacular by-election win behind him and a sunny party conference ahead of him, he smiled at his new left-wing label. I'm very amused to see Ian Duncan Smith uh, trying to make out that Brent is in fact a very bad strategic result for us, defeating the government, and a good result for the Conservatives when they come third. He makes, and they make, a fundamental mistake if they think it will help the Conservatives against us. Here at Conservative headquarters, strategists are clearly taking the Liberal Democrat threat seriously. But some critics of the leader fear that his attack is a crude attempt to cover up for the Conservatives' own poor performance. They say that in order to be a serious contender for power, they must win by-elections. And attacking the Liberal Democrats is not the real issue. Rita Chakrabarti, BBC News, at Conservative Central Office. And tomorrow on Breakfast with Frost, the guests include the Liberal Democrat leader, Charles Kennedy, and the Home Secretary, David Blunkett. That's Breakfast with Frost at the earlier time of 8.30 tomorrow morning. Motorists may have to pay an extra five pence a gallon for their petrol from next month. Chancellor Gordon Brown was due to, was due to announce the inflation-related increase in the budget in April, but it was postponed because of volatility in the price of oil caused by the war in Iraq. Petrol prices have come down in the past few months, but if motorists thought that was going to... Great performance. Right. Um, and penniless. She struggled for years to bring up their son in America. I gave West the exhibition. For motorists, the war in Iraq meant a sudden jump in petrol prices. They peaked in March at the start of hostilities. But once it became clear that oil supplies weren't being disrupted, they quickly came back down again. And they've been roughly where they are today for the past few months. Gordon Brown in Dubai today. He isn't yet saying he will raise petrol duty, but all the indications are he will. The government badly needs the extra cash. Tellingly, the Treasury is playing down the risk of future oil price shocks. But petrol companies say now is not the time to raise tax. It'll hit the motorist and it'll hit the haulage industry. And of course, it'll also hit the petrol retailers who will take the brunt of the public's anger at these price rises. Motorists filling up with petrol tonight were surprisingly divided on the issue. Stealth taxes, uh, you know, it's just another example of that, I think. There's plenty of money we all pay in tax already. If they're going to be used to improve the roads, then actually I don't mind. With oil prices falling for now, the government may be hoping any tax rise goes largely unnoticed. Patrick Bartlett, BBC News. Lord Williams of Mostyn, the leader of the House of Lords, has died aged 62. He was appointed to the post two years ago after a long legal and political career. Tony Blair said he's profoundly shocked and saddened by Lord Williams' sudden death. Jonathan Beale looks back on his life. Lord Williams was a politician whose dry wit and sharp mind made him a popular figure not just with cabinet colleagues. His death has come as a shock to both them and Tony Blair, whom he served so loyally. As leader of the Lords, he was the Prime Minister's fixer, working behind the scenes with skill and humour, pushing through sometimes controversial reforms. His fellow ministers say he'll be sorely missed. It wasn't just as Master of the Lords that he was important in the government. He was also somebody whose advice was wise, who was always listened to whenever he gave advice or expressed views. He was a real, real big member of the government. Despite the ceremonial pomp of his position, he never forgot his more humble Welsh roots. Son of a teacher and grammar school boy, he went on to become a successful lawyer before his political career took off. We ought to move now to action, to equality and to justice. I beg to move. 
Though softly spoken, his advice was rarely ignored. Tony Blair made him Attorney General before putting him in charge of the Lords. But he was never timid. He disagreed with Mr Blair over Lords reform, arguing for an elected second chamber. He was also highly respected by his opponents. His death is a genuine loss to the government, Westminster and public life. Jonathan Beale, BBC News. Lord Williams of Mostyn, the leader of the House of Lords, who's died at the age of 62. Now, for the first time, the Welsh Nationalist Party, Plaid Cymru, has voted to try and gain independence for Wales. Delegates at its annual conference in Cardiff supported a motion calling for Wales to become an independent nation with membership of the European Union and the United Nations. The families of four young soldiers who died at Deepet Barracks in Surrey have teamed up with others to demand an inquiry into what they call inadequately investigated army deaths. Fifteen families met today and vowed to fight for a public inquiry. Their campaign continues, parents still wanting to know how their sons and daughters died. Fifteen families who lost loved ones in unexplained deaths in the army met in central London today to start up a new pressure group. Among them, relatives of the four privates who died at Deep Cut Barracks from bullet wounds. James Collinson in March last year, Jeff Gray six months earlier, and Sean Benton and Cheryl James, who both died in 1995. A Surrey police inquiry found yesterday there were no grounds to bring criminal prosecutions. It did, though, back a broader investigation into non-combat deaths. The families have now joined with others to campaign for a full public inquiry. All we want is the truth. Tell me how my son died. Tell all these people in there how their loved ones died. We feel that young soldiers' deaths haven't been investigated as thoroughly in the past, and it, it, that should be the case from now, now onward. The detailed evidence of the investigation into what happened here at Deep Cut has now been passed to the Surrey coroner. He has yet to hold an inquest into the death of Private Collinson. But for all of the families now involved in this campaign, there are still too many unanswered questions. The Ministry of Defence says it's not shrinking from the issue and has already implemented changes, but it believes a decision on a public inquiry would be premature. Daniel Bircher, BBC News, Deep Cut. A second British man has been arrested on the Costa del Sol in connection with the murders of two young Spanish women. Meanwhile, Spanish news agencies are reporting that 38-year-old Tony King, the British barman arrested near Malaga yesterday, has confessed to involvement in both crimes. The former 